Welcome to Calf Academy, your source for calf care education. This is the group feeding calves module. In this module, we're going to look at feeding systems, both individual and group. And in group, we're going to look at auto feeder systems and ad libitum or free choice systems. And then we're going to look at acidification and tips for managing acidified milk. Until recently, individual calf hutches were the predominant way dairy calves were raised. The advantages of individual calf hutches are, it's easier to see the signs of sickness when you're hand feeding the calves every day. There's no competition for feed, milk or starter, and it reduces the chances of spreading disease as there is no nose to nose contact between calves. The disadvantages of individual calf hutches are, it's climate dependent, and it's labor intensive. More and more dairy calves are being fed in group feeding management systems. The advantages of group feeding are it's time and labor saving and calves are social animals and group feeding allows them to interact with each other more. The disadvantages are it's harder to see signs of sickness in a group and nose to nose contact leads to rapid spread of disease, predominantly respiratory disease. There are two methods for group feeding. One is automatic or computerized calf feeders. These automatically mix the milk replacer in 0.5 to 1 liter batches so the calf is always drinking warm fresh milk. These work 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year with minimal labor preparing feed. The second method is ad lib feeding or free choice feeding. These provide variable intake for each calf and they're labor efficient. Some of the features of automatic calf feeders are calves have access to a constant supply of warm milk in smaller amounts. Another feature is the control of individual calf intake. It can be programmed. The computer captures individual calf consumption and rate of consumption. Then it generates a list of calves that aren't drinking aggressively, which may indicate sickness. Another feature is that weaning is easily controlled through step down procedures tailored to the farm's goals. The ad lib or free choice milk feeding programs, calves have access to milk 24 7, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, much like the automatic feeder. They're not consistently warm as with the automatic feeder, and the milk is more subject to ambient temperature. It allows the calves to drink more milk when needed to compensate for colder temperature. Their intake is not as regulated as it is with the automatic calf feeders. The milk only needs to be made every three days but agitation is critical. The pH of the milk should be 4.5 to 5.0. Having the lower pH in the milk, which requires acidification, whether feeding a milk replacer or whole milk, the advantages of acidifying are it prevents overeating or overconsumption and slows the growth of pathogens in the milk. Some factors to consider when ad lib or free choice milk feeding Calves should be raised in groups of eight or less. There's a higher risk of diarrhea and respiratory disease. The high intake strengthens their immune system because again, immune system is an energy dependent reaction and weaning can be done either gradually or abruptly. It's common to dilute the milk near the time of weaning so that starter intake is increased. A challenge of ad lib milk feeding or free choice milk feeding is preventing the system from freezing in the winter is often the case on farming operations. A challenge is the mother of invention. Several innovative ways have been developed to group feed calves and prevent the milk from freezing during the winter. A challenge of ad lib feeding 
or free choice feeding is that milk stored for length of time, several days, provides a favorable environment for bacteria to grow, for pathogens to grow. Lower temperature and pH slow bacteria growth, but refrigeration of milk in a calf feeder is not practical. Because of this, feeding acidified milk or milk replacer is common in ad-lib feeding systems. By acidifying the milk, it allows larger quantities of milk to be provided for ad libitum feeding of calves. The initial amount and type of bacteria in milk affect how long the milk can be stored before bacterial populations affect calf health. Each calf's level of immunity will impact its susceptibility to infection. Milk or milk replacer feeding systems need to be cleaned thoroughly and regularly, and this is very important in ad-lib feeding systems, that are used to acidify milk or milk replacer are citric acid and propionic acid, both of which are classified as generally recognized as safe by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Citric acid is typically used in commercial formulations of acidified milk replacer. Research has shown that adding citric acid to whole milk or milk replacer can hold the pH at 4.5 for four days at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Citric acid is available in powdered form. The powder needs to be stored in an airtight container to prevent absorption of moisture. Propionic acid is also used, was studied in the late 70s as an option for acidifying milk or milk replacer. It was most often used at a rate of 1%, but the pH of milk varied from 4.1 to 5.0. Some reports suggest that propionic acid treated milk was not well accepted by the calves. It is clear, colorless liquid with a pungent rancid odor. It burns the skin and its vapors irritate the mucous membranes. The other thing about propionic acid is it's corrosive to metal. Its use is permitted by the FDA, but it does have safety and handling issues, as well as potential palatability issues. And this may limit its usefulness for acidifying milk or milk replacer in ad-lib feeding systems. Another acid used in some places to acidify milk or milk replacer is formic acid. Formic acid is a derivative of formaldehyde. It is not FDA approved for use in milk or milk replacer. It is clear, colorless liquid with a pungent odor. It is very irritating to the eye or mucous membranes, and it causes serious skin irritation and damage to the eyes. Formic acid is corrosive to all metals, to most metals. It is not recommended or legal to acidify milk or milk replacer in the U.S. with formic acid. In general, when acidifying milk, safety is, is important. Gloves should be worn, long sleeves, protective gozzles, and the acid should be handled carefully. After handling acid, you should wash your hands thoroughly. Safety information provided by the manufacturer will provide complete safety and storage instructions. The concentrated acid should be diluted to make weaker solution for mixing with the milk. When managing acidified milk, you should start with high quality milk that has low bacterial contamination because remember, we're just reducing the growth of the bacteria, we're not eliminating it. Therefore, if the milk is very high in bacteria or pathogens, acidifying it's going to be of limited benefit. You should treat calf milk the same as saleable milk. For whole milk or milk replacers containing skim milk, Acid must be added to cooled milk, 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, to avoid curdling. At higher temperatures, when the acid is added, the milk will curdle. Some other tips for managing acidified milk. The acid or preservative should be added at the time the milk is collected. You should always add diluted acid solution to milk. Never add milk to acid. The acid should be added slowly as the milk is stirred and allow adequate contact time for the acid to work on bacteria up to 10 to 48 hours. The pH of the milk should be tested after the acid has been added to ensure the target pH of 4.5 to 5. Reducing the pH by too much will limit palatability. Not adding enough acid allows the bacteria to grow at faster rates.
Some other factors to consider when managing acidified milk is that young calves may reject acidified milk, particularly the first week of life. Calves fed individually or young calves can be started in a separate group and dilute the acidified milk with whole milk and this may help them make the transition to acidified milk at a later time. Also, feeding from nipples works better than feeding from an open pail with acidified milk. In ad lib feeding systems, a ratio of one nipple per calf is recommended, although systems have been successful with up to one nipple per three calves and work very well. This concludes the acidified milk module. Thank you for completing this Calf Academy course. If you have follow-up questions, please contact your Milk Products National Account Manager.